ever since the new Charlotte update, people have been trying to avoid this map, banning it, and not picking it with their squad. And you know, I think that Charlotte is not a hard map to play. The new rework has given it more depth, more ways to attack, more ways to defend, and more options as a team. So in this video, I'll be showing you a strategy in Snowmobile Garage and Wing Cellar to hold this objective down. I've been a console player in the high gold to plat range and I've versed many teams I've struggled to hold this objective down and pinpoint where they're going wrong. So in this video I'll show you where most teams go wrong, where most teams play, what the common angles are, what places and what objective is underestimated, what rooms are played less, uh, where you know generally teams are going wrong from all the time I've played. So I'll be explaining to you, you know, how to really pinpoint where you're going wrong and hold this objective down so that you can win rounds and win games for your team. I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you find it informative and if you have any other recommendations or any other sites you want me to do in any other maps, please comment it down below so you know I know what to do for my next videos and I know people are enjoying the videos I'm making. Thank you and enjoy. Harsh reinforcement. Second reinforcement. Third reinforcement. Fourth reinforcement. Fifth reinforcement. Sixth reinforcement. Seventh reinforcement. Eighth. And ninth reinforcement. Sure. So the first top player, as I mentioned before, is smoke. Now you should always pick uh, the shotgun on smoke and the SMG11, obviously. And I'd want you to bring a shield. And I'll tell you where to place that later on. So as soon as you spawn in with smoke, you'd want to reinforce both of these walls and make a rotation. Now you'd make sure that this is, this um, rotational here is easily accessible by the defenders because you don't want them to get stuck over here like this or anything like that because if they're going to peek that area over there they want to be quick they want to quickly peek it and you don't want to make it a crouch hole because you know that just gets it stuck and it's just slower compared to this where it's just like quick peek so that's the first thing for, uh, that's the first rotational you want to make of this smoke player the second one you want to make again is a standard so, uh, you wanna make this one easily accessible as well. And I'll tell you the use of this. So basically, you know, this is similar to Oregon in basement, uh, where you place a shield and you have a warden playing um, in a similar location to this, where there's no entry point at the back. And the warden kind of plays here. Um, there's no way they, they can get you vertically, it's closed up here. So it's kind of a strong position if you can get the shield like right here. Um, it'll cover the rotation over here as well. So you just want um, one of your operators to play over here. And um, so Smoke will set up the shield for them over here. And I'll explain what the operator needs to do over here later on in the video. But this is the main place that you kind of need to hold because Wind Cellar and um, Basement Hallway is kind of underestimated by a lot of teams. They kind of disregard this area and put all the utility down there so after you've made these rotation holes as a smoke um, the smoke will generally, generally be playing in this area over here first of all he's got this cabinet so it defends him from blue even though anyone rushes in and you don't want really, really want anyone to get control of blue so since the rework of chalet this is the most important part of the map as it connects this objective all the way to this objective and if attackers have got control of blue your defense will fall apart. So basically, Smoke will be playing here. He's got this um, cabinet here defending him from blue. He's got this bomb over here defending him from the garage if it gets opened. And he can swing over here if someone walks in here or someone's peeking here. He can swing and shoot the, the, the operators. Also, you don't want to be holding a peek over here with Smoke um, because if you're holding a peek and someone else holds a peek like this, they can just kill you like this. So. Remember you want all your pellets to hit the operators so you just quickly go to the side and try to get as much pellets as you can on the person. Obviously don't be too aggressive and um, just play off sound cues and call outs and um, yeah. 
So now with the smoke canisters, okay. So if someone enters blue, you can always you know use these steps, go up here and chuck your smoke down there, and you get that area smoke there. Uh, over here, you can you know you can always you don't need to expose yourself. You can chuck the uh, smoke canisters like this over the reinforcement. Um, you can also um, if someone's planting behind you know these bends, these bends, you can shoot through them. Look, you can shoot through these bends. So if someone's planting behind bend, don't hesitate to shoot through the bends and you can get them if they're planting here in default. Also, if someone says, oh, there's a Twitch drone um, at drone hole and they can't get it, maybe for some reason, they can't get it. Instead of peeking all the way here, exposing yourself uh, to the wall or um, to anyone lying down at that drone hole, you know, you can shoot through this thing right here. If you, if you shoot right here, you're going to hit that spot here. Look, I'm hitting these bullets here. You're going to hit the drone that's going to be coming through the drone hole. So just memorize that this part right here of this trash can will let you, you know, get the drone over here. Um, another uh, thing about smoke is that a lot of people don't know yet is if someone's planting default, you know, smoke's canister goes through. Also, if you place the smoke canister right here and you blow up, it will hit the attackers that are trying to plant here. Right here. So remember that if you can't chuck the smoke canister and you're gonna, you may get killed from it, you can place your smoke canister right here and it will get the people coming in here, I guess. It will get the people trying to plant in default as well. So yeah, I think um, that's what smoke needs to do. He's mainly going to hold this area down, uh, not peek too much, be a little bit um, reserved and just giving call outs and playing off certain cues. I think that's really important for the smoke. Now, the second operator you'd want to play is Kaid. So, you can use any gun for Kaid. You can use a shotgun or this, uh, this machine gun. Um, I'd rather prefer the machine gun in this situation as Smoke already has a shotgun. Um, as soon as you spawn him in Kaid, um, you'd try to prioritize getting these hatches. So, Kaid would usually go for that hatch and that hatch right there. And when while he's coming up, um, trying to get the hatch after he, while he's getting the hatches he can place his barb right here and right here and I'll explain the reason for this later on so usually um, right here so usually I wouldn't you know recommend placing barb right here as the attackers don't need to expose themselves they can just you know break the barbed wire like this because you really want them to expose themselves for smoke but the reason for this barbed wire is different so I'll tell you so after you know smoke has reinforced both of these walls you'd want to place a kite no, right here. Now, let me show you what that does. This electrifies both of these barbed wires, and obviously the wall over here, both of those walls over there. So you know this prevents someone um, jumping in from this barricade here. So if someone's uh, playing outside here and uh, they decide to jump in, you know they will be electrified. The drones coming in, it will be harder for drones to come in as well. And you know it's just a pain. It's another sound cue. You know uh, you hear the noises the attackers are making if they are on the barbed wire as well, and if they are trying to destroy the barbed wire. So you know that's really helpful for smoke. So as soon as Kai's got both of the hatches, got both of these barbed wires. Ten seconds left. I'd um, probably uh, place this Kai second. Down to five seconds. Uh, gadget right here, as this connector is important as well. So you, you know you don't want to give this connector away again. It connects both of the objectives. And it's an important hatch here, and if someone does drop, they can get that smoke and the kite, and then go on to get the Wamai that was, that's probably in the future going to be playing in blue, and um, the person playing in shield. So you don't really want to get blue away, so you place your second kite charge here. This hatch over here, you just keep it reinforced, and then um, hopefully the attackers will use their gadgets over here and not get this open. Even if they do get this open, you know, you can always get that player uh, to retreat over here. So. That's basically Kite. Now, his job is going to be to trick this wall. So, obviously, uh, you won't place this Kite charge um, right away. So, if I can pick this up, yep. Uh, you won't place this Kite charge right away. You'd want to try your best to trick this wall right here. And the smoke can help you by checking the drone hole for you for a, just for a little bit. So, you're just going to try to trick this Kite wall. And once you think the attackers have given up, you can throw your Kite back here. I would choose a bandit. This, if you've not used Van Thatcher, during banning phase, I'd choose Kite, but if Thatcher is still in play, um, I'd probably use uh, Bandit. Um, just try a Bandit trick this wall. Obviously, Bandit can bring the barbed wire as well, then get both of the hatches, but I'd probably use Bandit if um, they've not 
ban Thatcher as it's easier to trick. Kaid is going to be rendered useless in those situations. If Thatcher is banned though, and they, even if they bring a Maverick, they won't be able to get this. You know, it'll be really hard for them to get this. So yeah, it really depends on your situation. And um, you know, after Kaid, majority of the round will be playing over here um, as a defender. I think he's just spending all his time trying to block them from coming in from this wall. And if they do give up on um, getting this wall, or if they even even if they get it opened, you'd want the Kai to rotate back into connector. You know, place the other Kai charge up here, and then just chill here. And um, he can hold uh, that angle over here. You know, uh, and he can always swing if someone's planting. He doesn't need to expose himself. He can shoot here. If sm someone needs open blue, he can check this as well. Main stairs, and obviously he can right swing uh, if he feels confident. So overall, um, Kai is a strong pillar for the team. You know, you want to keep the Kai alive, and um, he needs to have a good sense of judgment as well. So when to rotate, when to trick the wall, when to put his Kai charge on, car charge on the hatch, and yeah, most of the most of the time. Um, you want to maybe try to get him to sit on cameras as own, quickly check cameras as own. Not for too long because they might get the wall open. But you know, overall feeding intel, trying to find out how many people are outside, trying to get this wall open, how many people are in hatch. Just giving callers to the team and keeping them together. And that's it for Kite. So the third operator I would pick is Frost. Now normally Frost wouldn't be picked in most sites, um, she's quite situational. But I think this site is perfect for Frost. So as soon as you spawn in, you want to place your shield over here. Uh, this is for the bulk well, I, which I'll explain later why it's useful. So place your shield here. And ever since Frost got the shotgun, you know, she's been picked more. And, you know, she's kind of useful now as well. So the first Frost map I'd want Frost to place is right here um, in the bar dryer. You know, the main reason for this frost mat isn't, you know, to get a kill or to get down from this frost mat. It's so if attackers do jump in from this barricade here, they need to look down and they can't aim at that smoke. So they need to look down and shoot the frost mat before, you know, aiming there. And in that time, smoke has a chance to kill them. So you want to place your shield and your frost mat. So no reinforcements for you. So as soon as you place your frost mat, you want to come upstairs. And you want to be placing two rotations for attackers. Then you place one rotation here. So all it takes is four bullets. It doesn't have to be perfect, just any kind of rotation that defenders can crouch So four bullets in the go. And you want to open the attack right here. Okay, so after you've done this as a frost, you know, you can go down this hatch right here. And then you're back into objective so you want to make those rotations open those two hatches and come down here so you just need to place the shield place one frost mat here go all the way up open that rotation there rotation down there open the two hatches come back into objective and place both of our frost mats right down there and I think that's it for frost now frost job is as I mentioned before the shield that's going to set up for the player uh, I think Frost should be playing here, so she has a good submachine gun, it has uh, nearly no recoil, so you know it's really useful for long range battles down here, you know she can uh, peek through this angle, this tight angle over here, if wall gets open she has a long range gun to shoot down, and if she is forced back, you know she can always play behind this wall here, and peek here, peek here, peek here. Now, the main part of Frost is, so Frost needs to remember, so as I told you before when I was doing the reinforcements, we had one reinforcement left. So when if this place gets uh, bombarded by attackers and she, Frost is getting pushed really really hard over here, she can uh, go back here and then reinforce as well, right here, like this. So try not to do that really early in the round, if you have no other choice but to retreat, you want to go back and then just reinforce and close this wall off as well. Now, that, what that does is you've wasted time for attackers to come into this um, uh, barricade, come through this barricade. First of all, you've um, stopped them from doing that because of your shield and obviously they're going to be peeking a little bit. You know, just keeping them from coming in. Don't peek that much, you don't want to get killed. Um, and then after that, when you reinforce this wall, you're going to waste more time because this wall is not going to be open. And they will need to use utility and gadgets to try to get this wall open so that's important as well so you're wasting double time 
No, you kind of need to be smart about it, and that needs to be a last resort as well. And I think that is that's it for Frost. I think that's it for Frost. Um, she's a really important operator as well, and I think she fits really well into this objective. Now the fourth operator we'll be using in this objective is Wamai. So Wamai will be probably doing the most uh, amount of reinforcement because his gadget uh, loads in obviously and he only has two proximity mains to place and his shield is already placed so as I mentioned before you know Frost placed his shield here. So the reason I chose Wamai here is one because he has his gadgets he's going to stack all his gadgets up here you know around this area over here so no attacker can you know Zafia charge Ash charge and break that shield right down there and as I mentioned before blue is crucial um, people call this blue people call this connector I'd call it blue but this is crucial to defend as it connects both objectives you'd want the Wamai here you know not to peek that much but you know occasionally get up here be a little bit aggressive shoot anyone coming down those stairs right there and you know just keeping them away you know he can always go down here as well and if someone's trying to enter from here he can shoot them as well so this is where Wamai will be playing now to place his proximity mines I'd have one proximity mine right down here you know uh, either side of this so right up here I think as soon as someone's uh, uh, you know if someone comes from this garage area or the stairs from trophy and they come down here and they try to push um, site you'd hear uh, the proximity mine go off the first time even though they destroy it after you still know someone's there and if they try to go even wider to try and peek that frost over here and try to rush the frost um, you'd hear the proximity mine go off ages ago so the second proximity mine I'd place as a Womai is probably for the smoke you can either place it for the smoke so you can Ten place seconds. it behind this little lamp right here or down to, to help seconds. yourself even more you can place the proximity mine right down here you must protect your bombs so you know by four. you may be saying oh well, my is checking this area so why do you need a proximity mine there if my needs to pay attention over here and he doesn't have attention there someone can sneak up on him so FMI is paying attention, most of his attention over here, you know, it's crucial that he hears someone uh, coming down those stairs as well. So you know that's helpful for him as well, you know, just make sure you're, you're stacking up all the Romais over there, you know, over here and this wall over here. Keep them separate though, if, uh, if someone throws a grenade and um, the Romai catches it, if two Romais are close to each other like this, this one will get destroyed. Sorry. This one will get destroyed and I'll destroy this one for no reason. So make sure they're quite spread out. But yeah, Wamai is just basically staying here, you know, and keeping them from pushing here and keeping them from pushing here. He has a really strong, sorry, if he has an AUG, IQ's gun. So, you know, he is um, really good at long range or long to medium range um, fights. So yeah, um, Wamai can also, you know, peek here if Gareth gets opened, uh, help on main stairs. Someone jumps in the hatch, help down there as well. And yeah, that's it for my mind. Protected. The last operator you're going to pick in this site is Jaeger. So again, Rager doesn't reinforce anything as he has to place his, no, all three of his gadgets. So the first gadget he'll be placing is right here. So, no, I can't pop here. so right here. So this gadget is important to the person playing uh, on the shield over here. You don't want to place it behind the shield because because if the grenade lands in front of the shield like right here the gadget won't be able to destroy it so anywhere in front of the shield is fine so the gadget can you know um, eat the grenade before it goes to the shield you'd want to place one of Jaeger's barbed wire right here to help at the frost and one of his barbed wires is going to go right here right over here you know this is so anyone you know coming down this area coming down here you know there is just a good sound cue uh, to help the frost and um, the Womai as well if he needs to. So last two Jaeger devices. I'd probably stack one Jaeger device here and the other one standing up. Now you may ask why am I just placing Jaeger devices here. One reason for this is grenades and stuns. People usually burn ADSs using stuns or um, get them reset using a stun and then throw a frag to follow through. So you know two ADSs just to stay safe for the kite and the wall 
I think 2 ADS is uh, what's the best over here. I know Jaeger is free to roam. So let me talk, talk about roaming. I want Jaeger, you know, normal entry points in this map is, you know, library, uh, master bedroom down there. So I really want Jaeger to play library Ten first of all. So this is his first line of roam. There's not, there's only one roamer in this Five map, it's quite a small counting. map. Um, so I think uh, you only really require one roamer Increased in this site. On but I think Jaeger does have a really, user. really crucial job to defend the site. So I think first line of defense um, for Jaeger is, you know, down here. Maybe break this barricade um, uh, to get known by the attackers. You know, someone is playing library so they know and kind of focus their attack more this area. But I think this is the first line of defense. So I want Jaeger to, you know, kind of hold this side down, hold it down, you know, go back here, hold it down as well. You know, keep the attackers from coming. Um, Jaeger should try his best to do that as well, you know, people are going to keep from here as well. But as soon as he feels a little bit pressured, and he feels like he can't hold it, hold it anymore, and he feels overwhelmed. He can rotate back. You know, don't be scared to rotate back. That's you giving up the first line of uh, defense. So you know, you've given up this side of the map. Now Jaeger can move back here. Maybe hold this for a bit. Hold anyone that's peeking that window. Hold anyone down here trying to open hatch, trying to play vertical. Jaeger's biggest concern right now is to stop anyone from playing vertical and getting the hatch open. That's his biggest concern as a roamer. You know, you can shoot down here as well. So as I just mentioned, the frost um, rotation holes over here, Jaeger's, Jaeger's gonna use them. And if he feels pressured up here, you know, he can go through here, go through that rotation, then go through that rotation as well. And he can drop the hatch, or he can carry on moving here and go down these trophy stairs as well. So, you know, this would just allow Jaeger to waste the enemy team's time, you know, they want to play vertical, but um, the idea that Jaeger is still roaming is going to be threatening for them. So it will be hard for them to play vertical and it will be hard for them, you know, to make any kind of move. Um, they'd probably end up focusing on opening the garage then. You know, Jaeger can also drop down here uh, to make a big flank for Wine Cellar. So Jaeger needs to be communicating well with his team. And, you know, after he drops down Trophy, this is like kind of the end of the map. So Jaeger can again start moving up. Um, into the middle of the map, you know, clearing every corner, clearing everything, making sure no one's here, making sure no one can come behind him except for the trophy stairs. And yeah, he can again move in here, move in here. You know, this wall soft, he can kind of wall, try wall back people here, uh, make the attackers feel uncomfortable if they're trying to play vertical. And say, for example, you know, someone is there, say, for example, someone's holding an angle up here, and Jaeger peeks here and he sees him. You know, instead of, you know, pushing, fighting a gunfight, go back, go back here. Or maybe go even further back, drop down the hatch, and reset again. Or back up trophy stairs, and back up into master bedroom, just to keep an angle down here. And by master bedroom is because this hatch is open again, as I mentioned. So if Jaeger just plays here, and you don't see someone peeks him right there, and he feels threatened, he can drop down this hatch right down here. And he's back into kitchen. So you're just playing mind games with attackers, wasting their time, stopping them from playing vertical, listening to your teammates, you know, flanking down these stairs, someone at the barricade, shoot, bang, they're dead. So Jaeger has to be the fragger of your team, the most confident in 1v1 gunfights, and the one that usually gets, you know, the most kills when you play with them. So yeah, I think, yeah, that's it, that's the end of this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed and um, I hope you and your team can play Chalet properly instead of banning it next time. Because I believe Chalet is, you know, it's a good map after it's been reworked. Um, I think it was reworked very well. Uh, it has more depth to it, it has more, you know, strategies. You know, you need to employ more strategies to push objective. It's just not opening that garage and pushing through. And I think, yeah, they improved Master Bedroom as well. Uh, they added the trophy stairs. I think they were important as well. And I think, yeah, it got more verticality and um, it's a more deep, deeper map, you know, deeper angles, um, better doorways, better reinforcements, uh, more free rotations, and it's uh, more structured in my opinion. So, yeah, thank you for watching. Um, if you enjoyed the video, like, uh, subscribe, and click on the bell icon. And please, please, please drop me any recommendations or any sites you want me to cover next. Peace.